We have three samples here. We have a sample of unretted straw, as you would have it. It's ripe, it's mature, it's yellow. We have some straw that was left uh, on the ground for a little while, and it's you can see the color change, and it's partly retted. And retting means that microbes have started growing on it. They're starting to rot it, but they haven't rotted it very much. And they always rot from the outside in, and the fibers on the outside layer, so we want them to rot it just enough that they uh, dissolve the pectin that holds the fiber to the rest of the stem and then we want to stop it. Uh, and we also have a sample of fully retted straw where the microbes have certainly done their work in getting rid of all the pectin glue that holds the fiber to the rest of the stalks. If you were testing to see if it's fully ratted and you want to look at the quality, we could break off some. I have a little handful of straw and I'm going to take my thumb and I'm going to press my thumb against my other finger. So basically I'm trying to make a right angle bend, <laughs> but I'm going to do it really quickly and I'm just going to go, instead of going like that, I'm just going to keep pressing my thumb and uh, you hear it breaking, there's sound, and you look what's falling out. So the shives are the hard inner parts, and when I press them, they're very brittle, and they turn into little pieces. Mm -hmm. The fiber is very flexible, so it doesn't break. And that's been a technique for separating uh, flax fiber for thousands of years. Uh, somebody figured that out a long time ago. That once it's retted, the hard parts fall out. And I'm going to do this side. The fiber is flexible and the hive is not. So the shive breaks into little bits and the fiber doesn't. So in uh, industrial <laughs> processing of flax, they would call this scutching. So this first part is breaking and the next part is just scraping. And I can get all the shive off because I'm holding it here. And in scutching, in a scutching system, it's the same. This is helped by a big belt, and there's some paddles that paddle it and they clean it. So you see all the shives are gone. And here the shives are gone, and some of the loose, short, weaker fibers have gone. And now, how do we tell if it's strong and if it's fine in diameter? And let's take the equivalent of roughly two or three stems. Uh, if I take too much fiber in my hand for the next step, it'll be too strong. If I take not enough fiber, it will be too weak. So try to take roughly the equivalent of two or three stems, or roughly about that much. It's less than a pencil, I don't know, uh, but about that much. And first we're gonna test for strength. So we're going to wrap it around our finger this way and wrap it around this way and we're going to give it a snap and we hope that there's a sound. If there's a sound it indicates that there's a lot of strength. If there's no sound it indicates that there isn't strength, the fibers are over retted um, and they're not very good for fine textiles. Hear the sound? The pop. Then go to the end where you popped, popped it. And we're going to look for fineness. Fineness refers to how easy does the fiber divide into ultimate fibers. So I'm going to take my 
wonderful fingernail here. And I'm going to hold it at this end here. And I'm going to scrape. And as I scrape, I'm going to turn it, keep rotating. So I try to scrape every fiber at least once or twice. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to do it a given number of times, let's say 10 times. Uh, and I want to always do it a given number of times because if I scrape one 50 times and another one two times, the 50 time one would be, of course, a lot finer, but not because of the characteristic of the fiber, but because of the mechanical action of my fingernail. So I'm only doing it 10 times. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now I'm going to try to fan out these fibers, and it's best on a where it's black, black surface, and we fan them out. And what we want to look for is something that looks like split hairs. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we can see some there. Yeah. Those are the, the tiniest ones that you can hardly see are called ultimate fibers. They're similar to cotton in diameter, and that's their kind of the basic fiber that was made by the plant. When the plant grew, those little fibers got stuck together into bundles. And so this to the naked eye looks like that's one big fiber. Mm -hmm. No, it's actually a fiber bundle. And here's fiber bundles and here's fiber bundles. But you see the fiber bundles have started to separate. And if I had all of them separate after 10 strokes, it would mean that that fiber is too fine. And when I put it through processing systems, it'll break up too quickly and I won't have strength and I won't be able to make a good yarn. On the other hand, if there was only bundles and no little fibers, that fiber would be very strong. The only kind of thing I could make would be like a really big yarn or a little rope. It would be too coarse and too underrated. So we want an optimum in between. This one is actually a little, slightly overrated. I can see it's a little bit too much fineness, but uh, there's always degrees. There's never, it's never a yes or no. It's always a degree. This is just slightly overrated. So I have looked at the fineness, I looked at the strength, we looked at the degree of redding. Uh, those are probably the most important uh, three factors in looking at if I have good straw or not. Other factors we can look at, and now we can go back to some of these. So one of the factors we can look at here is how even are the stems? And what's the average diameter? So these particular stems are almost all very even. They almost look like they were made in a factory. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that means the fiber that's going to come from them is going to be very consistent and very even. If some of the stems were big and some were small, they are not going to red evenly and the fiber diameters are not going to be even. So that, this is a very good sign right here that, that this has the potential to give us very good fiber because they're very similar. Now, these are also quite thin. And normally the thinner the f stems, the finer the fiber will be. Uh, one of the things that makes the fiber very even, the stems very even, is depth of seeding. If we have even depth of seeding, we almost always get very even plants. If we have uneven depth of seeding, we get big and small ones. Or if we try to put too much seed in a little narrow furrow, we also tend to get uneven stems. In our second uh, sample of straw, which is half ratted, we can tell quickly by the color that it's no longer nice and yellow, but it's not a nice gray color either. It's halfway in between and it's half ratted. And let's look at the quality of that. So we'll take some stems and we'll try to break them just like we did with the ratted ones. I'll take my finger and I'll, so I could bend like that at right angles start and I can press with my thumb and see the shives falling out mm -hmm. it's partly redded but it doesn't fall out as quickly as it did with the redded one right. no, definitely not, yeah. and the, the uh, closer I keep my thumb to the each time I press the smaller the shives will be and the more likely they'll fall out <laughs> so it's almost like I'm going <laughs> same mm -hmm pressing really closely. Now in an industrial situation, this is usually done with big fluted rollers and the straw goes over rollers, fluted rollers over and over and they bend and bend. But I'm doing the same thing with my, with my uh, thumb and finger and now I'm <laughs> scraping it. And so in industrial, that's called scutching where you're mm -hmm. scraping the fiber off. Right. You 
you see the dust flying and when you process mm -hmm. flax you can easily get two or three percent dust and you think well that's not very much but imagine if you were for every ton you process that means you're getting 10 kilos of dust uh, Okay, so I've scotched it actually with my fingernail and you mm -hmm. see it came out actually really clean. Yeah. So it is partly rapid. Yes. Okay, now let's, that's a little bit thicker than I would like, so I'm going to take a little bit away. And I'm going to wrap it around my finger. And will we hear a snap? Will we not hear a snap? You could tell. Yeah. That was, I had to pull <laughs> yeah, hard. To pull <laughs> that yeah. was stronger and that's what you would expect. Yeah. yeah because it isn't exactly. rapid as much. Right. Uh -huh. so it's, uh, Okay, so if I was making a rope or something or a geotextile where I really want strength, this is much better than that. Uh -huh. right. But what about fineness? Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do the same thing with my thumb. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to hold it here. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to scrape ten times. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's fan it out something dark and look for those tiny little fibers. Mm. I see a couple. Oh, well, maybe on this side. Yeah, yeah. Maybe exactly. A little bit. They're pretty scarce. And yeah, at the yeah. very top. A yes. Little bit yeah. And that's what we would expect. That fiber is obviously very strong. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, which is better quality? Tell me what you want. If it's a geotextile, if it's a rope, yeah. okay, this is actually better than that. It won't pay as much because the textile people always can pay more than the rope people, for example, yeah, yeah, or the yeah. plastic people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but for the buyer of, uh, maybe it's a plastic composite, maybe it's a geotextile, for him this is better than that one. Mm -hmm. Right. Now let's just, just for being crazy, let's try a little bit of this. <laughs> the unretted. The unretted. With seeds. Though. With seeds. <laughs> And again, I'll press with my thumb. And then we'll take our thumb and we'll make uh, indentations close together. And we'll do that over and over. And for one thing, I can notice there's almost no sound. Yeah. But remember those two I got, I was able to get clean by just doing pressing with my thumb. I don't think you could do the same with this one. <laughs> I mean, I don't, yeah. Well, that's that's why you do ratting. You know, <laughs> I, I sure hope it doesn't. I sure hope it doesn't come apart. Right. Uh, see, we have some breakage, but now you see some of the. If I press too hard, the fiber the comes comes off with the, with the shine. Yeah. yeah. So another technique when it's really hard is you can kind of vibrate your fingernails or fingers back and forth. Try to loosen the shive off of the fiber. Here. You can see here how tightly uh, the shive, even though they're broken, they still hang on to the fiber mm -hmm. because the pectin, which is like the glue between them, is still all there. Mm -hmm. And I'm pinching it, we see I'm breaking some of the fiber. And what I'm trying to do is make the shive really tiny so it falls out before it grabs, before it holds onto the fiber. We'll try with, this is kind of rough here. <laughs> uh, we'll try to break it. So do we hear a snap or not? No. That one I did. <laughs> but I know it's very, it's very strong. Yeah. Um, scrape the end here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, ten, and let's fan it out. And do we find any fine fibers? Mm, no, <laughs> no, not really. No, maybe one maybe tiny couple, one or something. Yeah. But uh, and again, that's what you would expect. It's not ratted. Those are kind of the differences between ratted, half ratted, and under ratted, and that's a very quick way to tell the quality. Mm.